<laughs> You're very pink with your pink gloves <laughs> and your pink shirt. Total Wine, Daily City. We are on a bit of a mission to find a Kilcarran and uh, well, we'll look at everything else while we're there. I will get to the Bourbon. Jump forwards if you want to get there in the second half. Because of the music, I'll probably switch to uh, studio voice. Yes, studio Phil here. So what are we going to see at Total Wine today? This is um, the nearest Total Wine to us. It's not quite as good as some of the ones further south, but yes, look, still plenty of expensive Macallans in the shelf, uh, the glass shelf or the glass cabinet, I guess. I don't think I would ever buy a two to three hundred dollar Dalmore. Maybe. Or a, <laughs> or a five thousand dollar Glenfiddich. Certainly spend a lot on the boxes, don't they, when they get to these expensive levels. I did have a little sip of the Signet at a duty-free one time. Super coffee. And I'm not a coffee drinker, so... Not for me. Ah, <laughs> $3,000 Shivas. I don't think I've seen that before. I'm sure it's lovely. Oh yeah, now we're talking. That's starting to look like a pretty good price as other prices have crept up. We've got a few of them in there. Oh no, maybe just the one. Love that Craig Ellicky 23. Yes, those are some expensive bottles. The Bonnehaven it's always expensive in the US, at least double the price of the UK. Makes no sense. Now, this is an interesting one. This is an 11 year, bar but it's a barrel select. And it's um, first fill European oak sherry. And what's the ABV? 64.5% on an 11. Ooh. What do we think of that? Has anyone had that? I don't think I've even seen that before. It's another unusual Highland Park, but quite a bit more expensive. Don't see too many jewels of Scotland around, but we do have a lovely Springbank bottle by them for D&M Liquor, a local shop. Now this must be the new, the new uh, Trevan or Trevague, and the price is new as well to match. I would say probably any Caden head is worth a go. Relatively speaking, they are cheap as an independent bottler of high quality, definitely to be trusted. I just don't, I don't know about dimensions, but these prices seem uh, extremely high. That light is bright, isn't it? <laughs> it was, uh, I know it was over $700 for that Apple Hour. Right, how expensive can uh, the Irish get? Fairly expensive. Just not at the level of the Scotch. Or the Taiwanese for that matter. Look at these guys. But uh, they have a, a good following, don't they? The Cavalans. A lot of people like like them. Even though they're young. Super powerful. Boss Hogs, I think those have been hanging around for quite a while. And again, pretty expensive for bourbons. Ah, Japanese whiskey. 
just always suspicious as to what spirit is actually in the bottle. Okay, on to the normal shelves. We did like that Abuna Alba, the nun sherried version of Abel Hour. Alexander Murray, another independent bottler which seems to show up fairly often at Total Wine, but we also see it at uh, Trader Joe's nearby. I've never had a Battle Hill. Never quite convinced to grab one. I think these are all the same. I did have a quick look at the ABVs for the single barrels. Guess I should have pulled the bottle out to see how dark it is, but it's pretty good price on the Craig Ellickies. That 13 is a great price at $50. Buy that, definitely, if you haven't tried the Craig Ellickie 13 before. The week of Pete versus Pete week. I've lost track. I'm guessing uh, they're just different year releases. Haiti Rattray seems to be a total wine quite a bit. I don't know what Port Charlotte is doing in this section. Uh, it's normally over with all the other smoky whiskies, but anyway, seems to have become a space <laughs> All of a sudden. Must have I do ten to walk past the Glen Livets and the Glen Fiddicks. I know these uh, Nadoras have a good Reputation, people like these, especially if they're up at what 60%. I don't know that one. Spectra. More of your standard bottles. What are the price of the standards these days? You know, it's hard to argue with that, is it? Uh, $90 for an 18 year old. Oh, that's a 19-year-old Glenfiddich there as well. I've not tried any of these new bottles of Glenrothes. I wonder how long those Game of Thrones are going to hang out on the shelf now. I was almost tempted by this, though. That Mortlach, mm, I bet that's pretty good. We do have a Tamdu batch strength that we were impressed by, but wow, it, it is super sherry. <laughs> of course, that is what they do. Hey, a couple more Caden heads. Younger ones this time. I oh, know they're all the same. Okay, a thrusk. Tom and Tool, or Tom and Towel, is it? Um, that's always a cheap bottle, isn't it? Some more Rattrays. Can't say I'm too familiar with those distilleries. And you don't see too many Royal Bracklers around either, do you? Now, these Black Label Alexander Murrays have been a little more tempting. Macduff, again, don't really know about it, but 58.5%. And um, the one next to it is a 14-year-old Kleinlish. And that's also high ABV, 54%. $100 each, $100 for a 14-year Cask strength Kleinlish, probably pretty good. Ah, uh, Glendronic 18 still hanging in there. 
I think the supply is... Oh no, they seem to have a few back there. So here's the standard Kleinlich 14 for $70, but of course it's only... I think it might be 46%. Oh, yes. We actually like that one a lot in our blind tasting, but you know, we do like the X bourbon, so um how much yeah uh, fifty dollars for Glen Cadam ten over here. Haven't tried it, but it's supposed to be a good one. <laughs> I actually quite like the graphics on that cake. A tale of cake, is it called? From uh Glen Morangy. If you ever ask someone at Total Wine what they uh, what to recommend, it will always be a Grange Stone, pretty much. If you ask the staff, no idea how much that thirty-one-year-old was. Old Glenfarclas still hanging out on the bottom shelf down here. There's an Edra Dara as well. And that's not the newest, is it? The number five. I don't think they even have the six. And the classic cuts are still hanging out here. 2019 and 18. Although, I must admit, I quite like that classic cut. For $87, I would say that is good value. Old prices, pre-tariff. That's why. Now we get 40% ABV on the old Pulte 12 like everyone else, sadly. That Glen Goyne 18 is discontinued now, isn't it? Might be end of the line on that one, I think. Someone will remind us in the comments, I'm sure. Yeah, open 18. Not worth 140, I don't think. It's just a bit lacking. <laughs> it's nice enough, but would not buy it again. Still haven't tried any Wolf Burns. A young distillery, so these are going to be uh, young whiskies. But seems to have a good reputation. I do actually quite like Beaumore. Just uh, would be nice if it had less colour in. So independent Beaumore. Always worth a go. Ah, now we're, now we're into the smoky section. Yeah, why why isn't Port Charlotte over here? Anyway, Wee Beastie was forty nine dollars, I think I remember. Good price on Ugadal and Curry Reckon. Oh, that's creeping up, I think. Starting. Oh, quite a few bunners in. Some standard kill homers. Okay. That's jumped up quite a bit as well. 160 now for the 18. And here's that full volume. It keeps tempting me and I haven't bought it. But look, they still got five in there. That is a discontinued as well, I think. Yeah. That's the ex bourbon only. No sherry in that full volume from Highland Park. Jura has a, a mixed reputation, let's say. We actually have a nice independent bottle of Jura, which we like a lot. All the standards from Lefroy here. Lore, not too expensive. Lagavulin in 16, creeping up, but I think that's still a good price for a lot of places in the country. Ockentoshan. Another one of mixed reviews, but if you ever get a chance to try the Ockentoshan Valanche, a cask strength version. It's very good. And Glen Scotia Victoriana. 
double thumbs up for that one. Definitely worth it. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, just the regular long row. Ah, there it is. That's what we actually came in for. I was a little shocked that there was only one left. But um, I want to compare it to the Oloroso version because that is just the ex-bourbon older version. Got a bit of New Zealand and Aussie. Well, oh, Italian. Hang on, I did blast past that, but French as well. I have not heard of most of those. Now we've got a whole section of Indian whiskey as well. Rampur, I don't hear too much about. Um, <laughs> but Amrut, we hear more about that. But there are some older bottles on here, I think, which may be out of stock or end of line now. Paul John also a good reputation for an Indian whiskey. Not for an Indian whiskey. People like it as a whiskey. Just happens to be Indian. No, nope, that's not whiskey. Where are we going next? Yeah, we got another whole row to get down. But this is uh, okay. Little, just the blended section, I guess. Nothing too exciting over here. I know I was uh, I was looking out for the compass boxes. I quite like the Lost Lost Distillery bottlings I've tried. Well, I've only tried one, but this is a nice blended malt. Ah, is that the 49% version? Yes, it is. That is a great bottle for $55. 49% ABV from Compass Box. Hard to argue with that either. $48 for the Johnny Walker green label. So, <laughs> so the Manchester United soccer version of Chivas. Apparently it's only for sale in the US. You can't buy it in Manchester <laughs> in the UK. That's what I hear from Alan at least. Now these two have a good reputation as well, don't they? Okay, Irish. What do we think of these prices? Yellow Spot has a good reputation, doesn't it? So that red breast, oh, that is the cask strength. It is still there. I thought that one was discontinued. I was wrong. Just new packaging on it, I guess. Napogue Castle. I think I've had a taste of that at a friend's house. Some big bottles of Jameson's. Jameson. No S, right? <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Wait, that's not whiskey. Where is it? Is it whiskey? Okay, Green Spots whiskey. Chateau Montalena and Louisville Barton. $90 each. I know a lot of people are keen on those. Bushmills was always a whiskey that was in the house growing up, although one bottle would be there for years with my dad. All right, let's have a look. We've got some more Cavalans here. Taiwan, of course. I guess we're in the, uh, the non-European section. More mystery uh, Japanese names, I guess. But who knows what's in the bottle? Really no idea. So much of it comes from Scotland to Japan to be bottled. Yeah. 
You tell me. Anything really Japanese in there? Okay, the Suntory. Toki wa. Hibiki. Fine. Probably Japanese. Okay, it's bourbon time. Where I'll have practically nothing to say because I know nothing about it. But hopefully you'll enjoy looking at the prices and comparing uh, to what you know. I can tell you, you're missing Justin Bieber playing on the soundtrack, so I've saved you from that at least. I don't know what it is, but that is a cheap bottle of spirits. <laughs> I think it's cheaper than the Coke, pretty much. I think I'm just avoiding, yeah. Keep out of the way of those people. They were having a bit of a chat. But I think they they come back later. So this is probably a Total Wine special, is it? Yeah, I can hear the other guys coming back down, so I think uh, we're going to bail. All right, we'll go back up and pick up where we left off, which was at the Willet. Okay, it's a big, it's a big Willet still bottle. Going to be hard to pack those bottles. Two stars for twenty dollars. Seems like a bargain. Hey, gold medal winner. White and brown is local, I think, California. I always think it's funny the the difference between Scotch and bourbon, the way there's traditionally no box on bourbon, apparently. You never get a can with, uh, you know, with the bottles. Whereas even even the cheap bottles of Scotch tend to have a packaging box or can of some kind that comes with it. Otherwise, it's considered really cheap. There again, bourbon is, on the whole, cheap, right? $23. $17 for some early times. Hang on, we're getting cheaper, I guess. We're going down to the bottom shelf. Uh, yeah. Hard to, uh, hard to fight those prices not uh, not having a box included. Did not like few bourbon. No. I think we got that shelf earlier. Did I skip one? No.
So what are these makers mark? They're special releases, limited releases. Oh, only silver? Come on. You can do better than that. A oh, rabbit hole is pretty expensive compared to all the bottles around it. Now, is that a total wine? Yeah, okay. This is a total wine barrel pick of Old Forester, I guess. $50 for that. And I know people tend to think those prices for the 1920s and similar are pretty good in California. I've seen comments about them being well priced before. Single barrels, but I don't think there were any store pick Russell reserves this time. Not that I could see, at least. I was going to actually dig them out and see what the rickhouse was this time, but then I didn't find any. Jefferson. Are these the ones on the ship? <laughs> I always associate it with the one on the being matured on the ship. Hang on, maybe we can read it. There's another total wine barrel pick. Oh, I see. It's just the ocean, which is aged at sea. Fair enough. Can't quite remember what the story was behind that. But um, I guess it works because it's stuck in my mind. I know people like the Iron Root as well. I always think of Johnny Drum being Glenn Farkless with that uh, label brand style. People keep telling me to buy the Magnus as well. That's a good one, worth trying. The Knob Creek 9, 9 is back on the label. Oh, and a 12. Is it special? Is that standard? Is that a standard release, that 12? Didn't seem to be a store pick or anything, so I guess, I guess it is. Single barrel, barrel proof at $53. $39 for the single barrels. Hang on, what's this one? $68 for the different single barrel. Oh. Well, cheap for a 12 year. <laughs> Is it any good though? Got gold, gold paint on the bottle. Those are some big Elijah Craigs, I think. Uh, no barrel proof in total wine recently. At least I haven't, I haven't noticed it. Some more total wine store picks on the Texas whiskies. Pretty expensive. A 
campfire is not really a bourbon, is it? If it's a... Uh, is it campfire? The one that's mixed with scotch? I think it's a blend. Hang on, we've been here before. No, different bottles. We have not been here before. Fair enough. I was about to edit. Yeah, I really don't know anything about them. It's a giant buffalo trace bottle. <laughs> I think an even bigger bullet. I think my arm's getting tired. I seem to be moving faster. Hopefully you can still catch all the prices of anything you want to check. At least the store was nice and quiet. And uh, staff don't worry about me taking videos around here. In fact, one of the staff came up saying, yep, there's a lot to see, isn't there? I was just having a laugh that I was going up and down every shelf in the store. Ooh, limited. Ten year? Is it worth it? Well, I thought <laughs> I thought I was done, and then I realised they've uh, they've rearranged the store slightly, so there's now two sections, and so they've moved all the Canadian and the rye and. Uh, you know, okay, we don't really need to look at Fireball, do we? But um, some of the other American whiskeys around the corner now, so. Well, it's not the rye section, is it? Maybe the, it's just the not the non-bourbon section. I guess we are in the rye section now. That would make sense how they've split it, but uh, I'd prefer it all just in one long aisle. But uh, anyway, more shelf space, more fun. We've got some Christian rock playing in the background now. So, saved you from that one as well. Of course, I would have just let it play, but YouTube will copyright strike the video. It's crazy just for some background music in the shop that you have no control over. Pretty good Balcones selection here. It seems like they've got good distribution to Total Wine. 10th Street is a very local tiny place down in San Jose. I was going to visit before we got locked down. I had the email with the guys to come and do a little video. Unfortunately, uh, that has not happened, but maybe soon. Some cheap prices down there. $12. $12 bottles. 
how can you make a $12 bottle of whiskey? I'm just thinking of the duty and the taxes or whatever, and then the shipping and the glass. <laughs> there really can't be many dollars left over for the actual, the actual spirit. Right, are we done? No, we are not done. I wonder if they've actually expanded the whiskey section in this rearrangement because this is the longest video I've ever shot inside a Total Wine and I just was trying to cover every shelf but it really did take a lot of extra time to get around it. Calvados finish. Seen that creeping in a little bit into Scotch whiskey as well. see my camera work getting slightly impatient now <laughs> it's like okay let's just wrap it up here I think mainly because we're down the bottom shelf again okay I think we're done <laughs>